Hey, what's it like blowing a 4-1 lead? I don't know. We don't wear just blue and white. We also have a little bit of burgundy in our jersey. Oh, is that the reason? Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, <gasps> it's a little ridiculous. Good boy. Play all the hits. Left Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me finish. How am I supposed to go to bed after watching that? I'm quite hyped. With you wherever you are, welcome to LF. Okay. 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 We're going to do this. Hey everyone, Steve Dangle here, and welcome to LFR, that's Leafs Fan Reaction. If you always watch LFR, if you're a subscriber, great to see you again. If you only show up to my videos where the Leafs blow a 4-1 lead, well, you've been here about half a dozen times. Seven if you include David Ayers. Hello, David! All right, all right, let's get the formalities out of the way. Leafs lose 5-4 in overtime to the Colorado Avalanche, and I lose... 5-4 in overtime to producer Drew. I lose 5-4 in overtime to producer Drew. Producer Drew, the man who you saw off the top of this video, the man who edits these videos, is an Avalanche fan. And oh, when the Leafs won 8-3, because they won 8-3 at home in their first meeting against the Avalanche, I had a great time. And I should have known. I should have known! I'm gonna get it in this one! Because listen, there's two ways to look at this game. There's the rational way to look at this game. For example, this is the Leafs' third game since December 21st. There's always time off between games. Alexander Kerfoot, who had a good game, played the right wing on the top line. I didn't know that he ever did that. Mitch Marner is out. He's a key defensive forward. They're on the road. The Avalanche are a very good team. How is this team supposed to get their groove when they never play? That is the logical way to look at it. This is a, a good team that is just doing the best with the hand that they've been dealt. Then there's the other way to look at it. And I'm not exactly sure what to call the other way to look at it, but the other way to look at it looks at the rational way to look at it and says, you know what? All of those points make a lot of sense and under normal circumstances, they would be valid. But it's the Toronto Maple Leafs and they blew a 4-1 lead again! You know what Toronto Maple Leafs fans are never allowed to do? Never once, never ever in their lives. What Leaf fans are never allowed to do that the Leafs always do? Take their foot off the gas. The Leafs can be up 4-1 or as we learned last year against the Ottawa Senators, 5-1 and they can just be like da 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 Meanwhile, every Toronto Maple Leafs fan is sitting in the stands in normal times or sitting on their couch or sitting anywhere and their heart is beating out of their chest. They look like Jim Carrey in the mask when he sees Cameron Diaz for the first time. This is how most fans watch a game where their team is winning 4-1. Hey, neat. This is how Leaf fans watch a game when their team is up 4-1. Ah! Look at this from Sportsnet Stats. 4-1 leads blown by the Maple Leafs since 2013. Before I read the list, before I read the actual list, look at the list, look how long it is. There's enough blown 4-1 leads here to make a big Shiny Tunes mixtape out of it. There's tonight's where the Leafs blew a 4-1 lead against the Colorado Avalanche, a record-breaking collapse because the Avalanche, now forever in their record books, they've won 11 straight games at home. The 11th was against the Leafs, and every Avs fan is going to remember that they overcame a 4-1 deficit. Imagine being on the fun end of one of these. Then there's February 15th, 2021 against the Ottawa Senators. That one was worse. The Leafs had a 5-1 lead. Does any other team have this problem? Seriously, any other self-respecting team, any other Stanley Cup caliber team, have they ever had a three goal lead heading into the third and gone, you know what? I don't like the looks of this. The Leafs. And again, again, in that one, they had a 5-1 lead in the second period, and before second intermission, the Sens scored to make it 5-2, and we're all sitting there with a three-goal lead against a terrible team. Oh, no! Being a Leafs fan is one of those how it feels to chew five gum commercials. If five gum was made of thumbtacks! Oh wait, we're not even done. October 5th, 2019 against the Montreal Canadiens. Oh, imagine blowing a 4-1 lead against the Montreal Canadiens. I thought 3-1 was bad. Ah, being a Leafs fan, where it was 3-1 hurts more than it was 4-1. You might remember this as the early season game against the Montreal Canadiens where the Leafs had a 4-1 lead and they started to bottle it and then Kasperi Kapanen threw his stick at Jeff Petrie, which you're very not allowed to do. He got a penalty shot and he scored. Not satisfied with simply blowing a 4-1 lead in regulation,
regulation. The Habs actually scored to make it 5-4. Matthews had to score for the Leafs to come back after dropping a 4-1 lead only to lose in the shootout. They lost. That was terrible. Can you give back a point? Well, they did. Can you give back the other point? You should be able to. They don't deserve it. What the hell? It was 4-1! It was Michael Hutchinson against Carey Price. Oh, boy. October 29th, 2016 against the Winnipeg Jets. That one, it was actually 4 nothing. And I remember feeling happy. I remember feeling so happy. Oh my god, look at the Leafs. Oh my god, they look like a wagon! And that's satisfied again with simply blowing a 4 nothing lead. They have to give up a hat trick to Patrick Line at the height of Line versus Matthews. And the hat trick goal was the overtime winner. Well, this point system sucks because the Leafs don't deserve a point for that! November 27th, 2013. Oh my goodness. Less than two months into the next season after blowing the 4 1 lead against Boston in game seven. I remember after blowing that 4 1 lead in game seven, they're like, we're going to go out and get another goalie this offseason and he's going to be better. And then that goalie blew a 4 1 lead that's in two months in. Bernier. It was Bernier. Leafs lose 6 5 to the Pittsburgh Penguins in a barn burner. And by barn burner, I mean tire fire. And then, of course, May 13th, 2013, the Toronto Maple Leafs blow a 4 1 lead to the Boston Bruins in game seven in Boston. I have never been happy. And am I right or am I right? Listen to your boy. How many times have I said the Toronto Maple Leafs love, love ruining amazing moments, especially against the Colorado Avalanche? They love ruining Austin Matthews moments. They love it. Kid scores four goals in his first game. They lose. After that four goal game, you might remember rookie Austin Matthews went through a nasty goal drought. Then all of a sudden in a game against the New Jersey Devils, he scores a pair of goals and the Leafs get a three nothing lead that they blow and lose to the Devils. That goal that he scored against the Chicago Blackhawks where he's like this to the United Center crowd, only for the Leafs to allow the tying goal negative three seconds later from Patrick Kane. And then he does the thing. The point game. The point game against the Colorado Avalanche where Matthews scored, had the goal disallowed, and I thought it was poo as well, Austin Matthews. But then he points. He scores again and he points. And it's legendary and Jack Eichel does it at the All-Star game because everyone loves it. Isn't that a great moment? Yes, except the Leafs lost that game! But it's not even about Austin Matthews in this one. It is about Jack Holy Smoking Campbell with the save of the year! The Leafs save of the year? The NHL save of the year! There has not been a better... Mm, the Malcolm Subban one. That was really good. It's a top five save in the NHL this season. And the Leafs just let him get shelled. They let him get shelled immediately after. And then the goal that gets scored immediately after, he almost stops that too, but he's not a superhuman. He is just a golden retriever of a man. Like, he's genuinely a good person. And he deserves better! How do you get a save like that? How do you waste a save like that? They still had a bouncy goal lead. They still were up four to two when he made that save. What happened? What happened? But again, again, we understand. We understand what's going on. The Leafs haven't played very many games recently. They have guys in COVID protocol, and not just guys, Mitch Marner. That is a very important player to this team, a very important player to defending a lead on this team. But you know what? No, no, it's not about the circumstance, though. It's not just about the circumstance. For any other team, it could be about the circumstance. Pick a team out of a hat. It could, uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets, you know? Okay? They have all those normal excuses. They're a normal team with normal excuses. The Toronto Maple Leafs cannot just simply be. They can't. They don't know how to simply be. The Leafs went into this game with the third best point percentage in the National Hockey League. That means they're the third best team in the National Hockey League. Two hilarious stats about that. Number one, there was only two teams ahead of them heading into this game anyway. Carolina number one, Florida number two, which means the Leafs, despite being the third best team in the National Hockey League, are second in their own division. It seems to happen a lot. And number two, despite the fact that the Leafs entered this game with the third best point percentage in the National Hockey League, that is the second time this season the Leafs blew a 4-1 lead. They blew one to the Chicago Blackhawks, but David Kampf did manage to score in the final minute and the Leafs ended up winning that game. So you know what's even funnier? The list that I read from Sportsnet Stats? 
it's not even the whole list. That's just 4-1 leads they blew and lost the game. They've blown 4-1 leads and, and won, ended up winning. You can't even feel good about it, but at least they won. It's two points in the standings, but a, in an actual bag of rocks in your heart. Every therapist in the greater Toronto area lives in a castle. I, I don't... I don't I, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm upset. I know. I'm hiding it really well. But you know what? I, I just, I, I just want to see one fan who's happy, you know? Owen Grace, uh, about a week ago, said, hey, if the Avalanche win, let's, let's make a bet. I get 10 seconds to be in LFR. And if the Leafs win, I don't even remember what the other end of the bet was because they lost! So anyway, here's Owen. Steve, thank you for all that you do, but the Avs won the Kadri trade, the Avs won the Hutchinson trade, they won this game, and the Avs need to take the Get Uncomfortable pledge from Black Girl Hockey Club. Let's go! Woo -woo! Oh, and you went to the game? Imagine going to the game! You know, like, this is what we're all bummed about, Ontario, that we can't watch this in person, hmm? Yeah? You know what would have made that humiliation better is if we all paid $250 for it. And I know what you're all thinking, $250? Steve, why did you get two beers and a hot dog? And to that I would say I was hungry! Ugh, I, ugh, I really, I, I'm so... Oh, this happens so much. It doesn't need to. It's 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 unnecessary. Oh, uh, why am I Steve Dangle? Like I didn't need to. I don't have to be. I could I could change it. I could just simply stop. But I know the moment I stop, the Leafs will win the cup. And so you might be like, well, Steve, you got to make the sacrifice. And no, if I have to suffer, I'm bringing you down with me. Questions? Was this worse than the blown lead versus the Sens? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. No. This was not worse than the blown lead against the Sens. First of all, this was 4-1 versus 5-1. Uh, second of all, they should not have lost to the Sens at all. Ever. The Sens were bad. Like, straight up bad. And they didn't have the excuse of all this nonsense that's going on around the team right now. Like, I'm not even mad at this current Leafs team. I'm mad at the idea of the Leafs, that they keep doing this to me. The individual guys on the team, I'm like, yeah, I mean, this kind of sucks right now. I, I get it. I sympathize. That sucks. I'm mad. But I'm not mad at you. Oh, last year when they blew the 5 1 lead? No, 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 I was mad at you. That was dumb and bad. Is at least they come out with a point a bad take? Yeah. Yeah, it is. What does, oh, this guy, what does this brand new feeling of blowing a 4-1 lead feel like? I, I am gonna, I'm gonna call my old boss from the zoo. I need a new job. I'm gonna call my old boss from the zoo and I'm gonna be happy. Oh, the zoo's closed too. Okay. <laughs> I'll submit a question after I'm finished breaking things. Oh, hey, hey, Chris, I destroy my vocal cords so you don't have to. Don't you go doing that. Uh, uh mm, mm. Okay. Well, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell your friends. Producer Drew is the supreme king of everything, super cool, fun guy. And if you want to watch my live reaction to this fiasco, you can go to the Sportsnet YouTube channel and check out the replay of Watch a Leafs Game with Steve Dangle. I, unfortunately, am Steve Dangle. Whoa!